poem is for us, by us. And I'm not going to get rich off of this, so you might as well pay attention. If you're black, jump back. Stay back, black and blue, as you keep your cool. Because it's going to get hot up in here before I get through. You see, it's not always as Brother Malcolm claimed, the blue-eyed devil trying to keep the black man down. Often it's the black man himself causing such deterioration, causing such race discrimination, causing such pain and frustration, causing church women to have their trials and tribulations while wanting a single race in our melting pot nation. You see, with the black man, my hair is too nigga nappy, and you be saying, you sure are dark. But definitely not lovely with your thick shaka Zulu nose. Skin is too black like an ace of spades. Pants are baggy, swinging like a hula skirt. Or words are too slurred or are tick you late Ted. You're either too black or too white to be seen in the hood. Too black or too white. don't want to accept the true blackness of a black man. So recognize me, not as an invisible man, for I tend to be seen and always heard on the rolling green golf courses with Carlton Banks posing as a broke Tiger Woods. Or I'm standing on Martin Luther King Boulevard where cockroaches drink black baby tears as a delicacy. Whatever the case may be, I know my heritage. I know where I come from. I know I am a black opal within a lily. I know how my father's mother's mother worked for the same white man who raped her. Whose child is that? The white man's wife asked. Great grandma X lowered her head, stuck them lips and closed her eyes. The white woman said again, you people are all alike. And when she had her child, great grandma X bore her scarlet letter and white people laughed and black people did everything hush hush and sent her away. And people don't want to talk about their business unless it's your business. And I'm not here to talk about anyone or exploit anyone in any way. Except. Except for myself and myself. It's time that my thoughts come together and make some sense. So what I'm trying to say is, I have so much hatred for you, the conqueror, for you, the oppressor. I have hatred. How could you have turned your backs? How could you have raped my ancestors white man? How could you have shut the doors on our ancestors black man? My anger is so irreplaceable, so irreconcilable, so irreversible that someday I'll get enough nerve to write a poem that no one will forget. You see, it's not like I chose my life, chose for my parents to have a little money, chose for them to have good jobs, chose for my parents to have a 30 year stable relationship, invite black and white folks over for cars on the weekends, dinner during the weekday. This happened because they are good people, my parents, my parents and my ancestors, my parents and their actions are reflected unto me. And unto me, this is what you'll never see. I wanted to write a poem for you, about you, about how I feel about you. But the feelings are so overwhelming that when a pen was placed between my black fingers, the words were misplaced and replaced with white words. And somehow the anger still existed, but I felt the feeling as I started writing this. And they're indescribable, like the sight of an animal giving birth, watching its nose peek through a peanut hole, Breathing for the first time, the very first time.